Hello, what do you know? Another video responding to a comment. I believe this comment is a little bit larger, so let me use a pager. Gray Terminal writes, thank you for your video. I'm on OpenBSD 7.1. I followed your steps to build Ruby in 2.7.0 by adding this option. But I get this error in make step with OSSL underscore OCSP dot C. All right, so when I made my previous video, I was using OpenBSD 7.0. And if we actually look at the changes to OpenBSD 7.1, we can see a number of compatibility changes with Libre SSL. Uh, one of those being most structs that were previously defined in the following headers are now opaque as they are in OpenSSL 1.1. And one of those is OCSP.h which is where this error is coming from. Normally, when you have a ports structure like OpenBSD or Gen2 or, or Arch, they have a number of patches to uh, their uh, packages to make those packages work specifically with their distribution or operating system. And one of those is right here, patch. EXT, OpenSSL, OSSL, OCSP, C. And this is the uh, ports repository for OpenBSD. So we're going to use this patch when we're compiling Ruby 2.7 point whatever. Now you might be asking yourself, um, why? <laughs> why compile Ruby like this on your own? Why not just use like RVM? And I already answered that in the previous video, but I'll answer it again. Usually, when I'm working with multiple clients, each client is using their own version of Ruby. And it's easy for me to use a tool like chruby uh, to uh, manage that. That's basically it. Plus, it's interesting to look a little bit, take a peek behind the curtain, see how things are done, and then compile things on your own uh, as a learning exercise. So as you can see, I have Ruby 3.1.2. We're going to download and compile Ruby uh, 2.7 point whatever. Let's just do the stable release here. Uh, let's go to my workspace. And oh, before we do this, we need to make sure we have um, all of our dependencies. And those dependencies are lead line, libyaml, gdbm, and libffi. And we only have libffi. So let's go ahead and add those. All right. Now let us download the version to Ruby 2.7.6. And then we want to extract the files from this archive using zxdf. And once we do that, we can change directory into Ruby 2.7.6. And then we just need to, uh, we need to grab this patch file. Uh, let's see, this one right here. Let's go to the raw file. Copy this. And then use FTP and then use the patch utility, uh, which basically just takes a diff file like this one and applies it to our files. So there we go. And then you can see it succeeded. And then we can go ahead and do configure uh, with the prefix. And this is where we're going to install our Ruby. Um, and if you look here, I have all my rubies uh, well, just one installed in the dot local share rubies directory. So that's where we're going to put this one. And I believe that's pretty much it for this command. And then you just do make and make install.
Okay, that looks like that installed correctly. Let me just close this uh, window and open up a new one. And you can see if we type chruby that we now have two rubies installed, 2.7.6 and 3.1.2. Let's use 2.7.6, the one we just installed. And you can just see if we type ruby dash dash version that it is indeed ruby 2.7.6. And we can try IRB uh, puts hello world. <laughs> and that seems to be fine. Oh, and just to make sure I didn't, I don't think I did this in the beginning of the video, but just to make sure you see that I have the correct uh, OpenBSD version, it is OpenBSD 7.2. So armed with this knowledge, I'll leave the other Ruby versions like 3.0 and 3.1 as an exercise for you to figure out for yourself. If you have any questions for me, be sure to check out my website, josephcho.com. I've got a host of social media accounts, Twitter, GitHub, Reddit, etc. Bye.